In this video, I want to talk about two fundamental components in the construction of block ciphers, and that's the S box and the P box. So like I said, the S box and the P box are fundamental components when you construct block ciphers. We're going to see some examples of S boxes and P boxes used in the common ciphers DES and AES. All right, so why don't we just introduce a little notation here for a positive integer n. We'll let bn be the set of all sequences of bits of length n. So bn is really just uh, blocks of zeros and ones of length n. And if we're given an element of bn, little b, then the bit value at position i and index i is just going to be bi. And we can equivalently think of bn as a set of integers, base 10 integers uh, ranging from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1. And so we see that there is 2 to the n elements of b, uh, b to the n. So if we take uh, just any function from s from bn to bm, that's what an S box is. So it's not a very exciting definition. It's just some function which has a domain of uh, BN and has a range of BM. So we are, we're really mapping sequences of N bits to sequences of M bits. So if we want to think of S, uh, an S box is really just a sequence of the values that are the output values. So we can think of it as a sequence IK where k ranges over all elements of bn. In other words, k ranges from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1. And then for each value of k, we just specify the value of s of k, and we'll call that ik, i sub k. And i sub k will be elements of bm, so bit sequences of length m. So the s box, the s in the s box stands for substitution. And n here is the number of input bits, and m will be the number of output output bits. n could be equal to m, but n could be larger than m, or n could be smaller than m. So here's a little example of an S box. So we'll just consider the mapping from B4 to B4, so sequences of four bits mapping to sequences of four bits. And we'll define S of B for a given uh, four bit value B to be three times B plus seven mod 16. So we see our table of values here. So it's really just a function which takes an input value of b, does 3 times b plus 7, and mods it by 16 to get another element of b4. And this is an s-box. It's not too exciting, maybe, but it's uh, a perfectly valid s-box. Notice this s-box comes from a formula. But in general, the s-box doesn't have to come from a formula. It can really be any values as the output. And notice there's 2 to the power of 4 values here which is related to the number of input bits here. So a non-trivial example for an S-box would be, we could take an S-box for DES. In fact, DES has eight S-boxes, usually labeled S1 to S8. And these go have six input bits and then four output bits. So here's the table for S5. Notice the number of values here the number of output values is two to the power of six, and that's 64. And these S boxes are actually very carefully designed to maximize the security of the algorithm. It may look a little confusing this table here, but if we take any input value of six bits, here's an example. Why do we take 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1? We look at the outer bits, notice they're in bold here, zero and one, and that tells us what row to look at. And then we look at the inner four bits, 1, 1, 0, 1, which is right here. And we see that this is the intersection of the column and the row. And that's the output value, which lies in here. It's just a way they chose to write it like this to save space. But really, this is just a list of 64 values. The 64 output values are on the interior of the table here. And this is just a list going through every possibility of the values of the output. And here's an S-box for AES. 
and it's called the Rheindahl S-Box. There's a lot of mathematical structure built into this of how it's defined. But the nice thing about this S-Box is that we actually understand through mathematics where these values come from. On the next slide, we'll be given an S-Box where we don't know the values of how they came about. And notice again here, we have eight input bits. Two to the power of eight is 256. So really to specify this S-Box, we need just to list 256 values. And just to explain how to interpret this S-Box, let's say we have an input, in other words, an element of B8. Uh, any 8-bit sequence of bits is a byte, and we know that any byte can be represented as a pair of hex characters. So for example, if we take our input to be 9A, then how do we find the output of that? Well, we look at the 9 here, that's the row, scan across the row, and then we look at A on the column, we scan down the column, and we see that they cross at B8. So the output value is B8. So this S box sends the bit sequence 9A to the bit sequence B8. Now, this is another example of an S box. This is for the block cipher skipjack. So this table is made, this algorithm in this table was made by the NSA, but here we're not clear about where these values actually come from unlike the AES Xbox where it's all defined by mathematics. Here, these values are kind of a black box. We don't know where they come from. And the way it's defined here is the same thing. They give a little example here. 7A gets sent to D6. So 7 is right here. We look at that row. And A is right here. And they intersect here at D6. Again, we have 2 to the power of A, 256 values. Now let's talk about a P box. So this looks complicated here, but it's not. Let's take a function P uh, going from BN to BM, and we'll call that a P box. If there's a sequence IK where K starts from one to M and each IK lies between one and N. And we require that for any input value B that the Kth bit of P of B it's just the ikth bit of b. So I know that seems a little bit complicated, but when we do an example, it'll become better on the next slide. So just as the s box, the s stands for substitution. Here in a p box, the p stands for permutation. And since p is just a function from bn to bm, uh, p is also an s box. So every p box is an s box, but you can't say it the other way around. You could very well have an s box which does not come from a p-box. So what does a p-box do? It permutes, it repeats, and dis or maybe discards the bits of the input, but it doesn't change them. And p-boxes maybe are best visualized with a diagram. So let's take a look to make this a little bit more clear. So why don't we look at a, a specific example of a p-box to make this more clear? Let's take a look at p here defined from b6 to b6. So we're taking six-bit sequences and mapping them to six-bit sequences. And maybe the most clear way to visualize it is with a diagram. So here are six bits, B1 up to B6, and then it's really just a shuffling of the bits. We're just permuting the bits. That's why we're calling it uh, P-Box. So no matter what values these bits are, it always gets permuted in the same way. And using this function notation here, maybe that makes it clear, B1 up to B6, if that's your input value, then the output value is B5, B3, B6, B1, B4, B2. And that's the exact meaning of this. Uh, how, that's the exact way that this function is represented by this list. So if we have uh, some random element of B6, let's say 110010, we can find its image just by shuffling the bits, by permuting the bits. If we imagine this is one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and we do the shuffling, this is the number we get out, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, which is 37. So the integer 50 gets sent to the integer 37 under this P box. Now let's look at the P boxes for DES. It actually has several P boxes in its algorithm. We're only gonna mention some of them. If you wanna look at all of them, you can take a look at this wiki article here. Why don't we look at one of the P boxes in DES called the initial permutation? 
that goes from the set of 64 bits to the set of 64 bits. And we can describe that either by a diagram or a table like we saw before. In this table, just read that from left to right and top to down. And here's a diagram, it's kind of looks uh, kind of overwhelming, but you just, <laughs> maybe the table is easier to reference. Um, so notice that the number of input bits equals the number of output output bits for this P box. But that doesn't have to be true in general. Here's another P box in DES, which has the input bits being less than the output bits. So we're taking 32 bit sequences and mapping them to 48 bit sequences. And it's kind of, so it's kind of an expanse, expanding P box because we're going from a smaller number of bits to a larger number of bits. And here's the table and the diagram that represents that. We can also have a situation where our domain has more bits and we're mapping to the range of a smaller number of bits. And we can find an example of that P box as well in DES, it's called PC2. Kind of compresses 56 bits down to 48 bits. And that means there's gonna to have to be a loss of eight bits of information here. Here's the table and the diagram for that. P box. So let's just compare a little bit S boxes to P boxes and see the difference. The point I want to make that if you have an S box, you're going to define it by a sequence and same with the P box, you're going to define it by a sequence. One thing to notice is that an S box is just a list of the two to the end output values. And a P box is also described by a sequence, a list, but it's in a different way. All right, so even though we're using a list to describe how P boxes and S boxes work, it's important to realize that we're using those lists in different ways. Why don't we just look at the special case where N is equal to M. So both our S box and our P box go from BN to BN. So a sequence, uh, the, the sequence or list that we use for this S box will contain two to the N terms, but the sequence used for the P box will only take N terms. So we see that even though these S and P boxes have the same domain and range to describe them, the S box requires a lot more information than a P box. The P box only needs N terms to completely describe it, but the S box requires two to the N terms. So let's just finish this video now by talking about how to implement these in Python. To implement an S box in Python, it's not, not, a, not too interesting. We're just going to make a list of all the output values and then to find a value of the S box, we just use the list notation uh, at the index we're looking for. So the S box implementation is pretty simple. The P box is the one that's a little bit more, more complicated. We can also use hex values. So here's the skipjack S box. We just write down all the values. Remember there's 256 values there going from B8 to B8. So every value can be represented as a pair of hex digits. So these are bytes. And notice how we could print off the, the value of any input value. So this S box takes 7A to D6, and we just uh, can find that value through code in the following way. We just print out the hex version of S at the input value, whatever that may be. So the P box uh, is a little more challenging to implement. Let's just take the P box we saw above there, which is described by that list, 536142. And let's just say we have a random list of integers that have, has the same number of values uh, as the N, which is six in this case. So let's just imagine we have B and it's six numbers. Why don't we just say 20, uh, 10, 20, 30, up to 60. Then we can apply the permutation P to the list B as follows. We just use this uh, notation here for constructing a list. We're gonna arrange uh, a variable i through the permutation list. And then we decrement it by one because notice we're counting by one here, but in order to access the array or the list, we need to go to start at zero. That's why we have i minus one here. And then we just find the b value associated to that index. So if we have our p value, our P uh, list here, and then our list of values B, and we apply this permutation to it, 
we get what we expect, 50, 30, 60, 10, 40, and 20. So we see that using this technique, we can permute a list of integers. And I think our strategy should be then is if we take an arbitrary element of BN, we'll convert it to a list of bits, we'll permute those bits in exactly the way we just saw, and then we'll take that list of bits and convert it back to an integer. So let's see how we can do that. First, why don't we just think about how do we change an integer into a bit list? Well, we can use the, this simple little uh, function here. We'll start off with an empty list, and then as long as x is non-zero, x is our input value, we know we have to keep cycling. And if you want to access the least most significant bit, you can just do x and one. And that is going to be the least significant bit. We'll tack that on in this loop to whatever we had before. We'll tack it on the front, that's important. And then we'll shift everything, all the bits of x over by one, and then repeat the loop. Eventually this will become zero and then we'll know we're done. So if you remember in that example, we took the number 50 there. And if we, if we change, if we call the function int to bit list on that 50, we're going to get those sequence of bits that we saw in the slide previously. And we also need to go the other way. If we're given a list of bits, we need to go back to the integer, right? So imagine B here, capital B is a list of bits. And how do we change that back to an integer? Well, so we just cycle over all the bits. Whatever the current value of X is, we shift everything over by one, and then we glue that bit on the end. That'll be the effect of this OR operator here. And then we'll return that value. So when we call that function on this list of bits, we get 50 out. All right, so we can combine all these functions together now to get an implementation of a P box. And the strategy there is if we're given a permutation P and some input value of X, then our first step is take that X, which is an integer, change it to a list of bits. Then call this, uh, use this technique to permute those bits. We'll just call that B again. And then to return a value, we'll take that list of bits and change it back to an integer. So, Here's that permutation on that P box we saw before. We know that if we put 50 in there, we should get 37. Check that slide out. And when we call that, we do indeed get 37. And that's how we can implement a P box. We could probably write it more compactly, but maybe it would be a little bit less readable. So there's different ways to do it. It depends on how you index your bits. You notice how we went from B1 up to BN. We could go from B0 to BN minus one, um, we could also make B0 be the least significant bit and BN minus one be the most significant. Depending on how you want to index your bits, the code here will be a little bit different, but that's basically the idea. All right, so I think that's the end of this video. I just wanted to talk about the differences between P boxes and S boxes in block ciphers.